Okay, so there's a couple things about windows. There are a bajillion different windows out there. When you get into real custom design, you will custom design windows. And, and they're, they're bugs, they're lots of bugs. So when you look at catalogs, like Architectural Digest, for example, those have these weird shaped, triangular, odd, weird windows. Those are all custom design. They don't come out of a catalog, you build them. We're not worried about building them, that's like, Master's degree stuff, okay? Um, and really, if you mess it up, you can't take them back because they're meant for you. So we'll get to that point, okay? What I'd like to do really quick here is um, go into our Windows library, so Architecture tab and Window. Let's get that in and I'm just going to go and look what I've given you so far in your template. And I think I've got just about everybody swung around to the correct template now. Um, we'll find you if you're not. Now, when we have in here, our, they're by category. So I've given you one custom window that in a day or two, I'll let you mess around with. That's this custom angle transom window. A transom is if you have a window above a door. So in that wall space above the door, you can put a window there. In the 1800s, we didn't have AC. We didn't even have ceiling fans. And so the only way to get air to circulate through space was to have a window above a door so that the room would get hot, the air would go out. Um, they're now decorative. They don't serve that function anymore, but we still have them. Um, there's also these um, other angles here you can use. So a double hung window, um, when you read to the night before Christmas, that Christmas carol of all carol poems, and he throws up the sash, that's a, a hung window. Hung windows have sashes that move up and down. Um, if it goes just up, only the bottom one moves, that's a single hung window. A double hung, they both move. Okay, that's the only difference. Graphically, they're exactly the same. So this symbol for the double hung, right here is the same for both. You use that for a single hung or a double hung, you would just change the notes on that. So again, if we're trying to get ventilation, you would lower the top sash, raise the bottom sash, and you create a convection loop that helps cool your space down. Most of us have homes that our sashes move sideways, the sliding windows. And we do that because it's the easiest way to meet the building code. Because I have a window that slides to the side, I can crawl through it easier. Imagine a firefighter trying to crawl through a hung window. They're usually narrower and they open up halfway. You can do it. Um, so I've given you one that's 42 inches wide and five feet tall. That's a pretty big, that's a heavy window. This is the kind that in the movie Ghost will fall and cut you in half. Okay? They're very heavy. Um, the new windows are not counterweighted like they were back in the day. In the old days, we put weights in the wall that would allow that window to move, and if those weights broke, the window would fall. And so we, we do them better now, we've got new technology, thank goodness. So we have single and double hung. Then we have fixed windows. A fixed window is also called a pitcher window. So when our pioneer forefathers came into Utah, there was no such thing as a window like in the back wall there. But that size pane of glass, was there's no way to make it. It would have shattered the moment it left the store. So what they would do is they'd divide the windows into small 10-inch, 8-inch squares, which is what you see in older homes quite a bit. That division is called a mullion, M-U-L-L-I-U-N. Um, those mullions are just a way to make small pieces of glass into bigger piece of window. When we got to where you get picture windows, what do you think allowed us to go to bigger glass? No, we didn't do pray. We added lead to the sand. So when you look at these old Victorian homes and start getting these large windows, that's called leaded glass. It's really cool because it does funky things with the light. Um, but that's what we had to do. We had to add metal to the sand in order to get the strength. We now do it with heat. We temper the glass to get the same strength without the lead because kids like to lick glass for some reason. And why is that a problem? Why is licking glass a problem 
if it's a solid. So here's your quantum physics result. Glass is a liquid. It's scientifically classified as a liquid. If you go to a home that's old, older than 75 years and you take a window apart, the top of the window will be thinner than the bottom. So glass is always in a constant state of flowing. Okay? Which is one of the things why those old windows become so um, sought after. The fix to that is if you're, if you're doing a renovation on an old house, you flip the window around and reframe it to get that glass to fit. Because that leaded glass is, is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. It's not made anymore. And the way light comes through it, you know, you've seen the prism on the walls when it comes through bevel glass. When it goes through leaded glass, you get all the spectrum. And so it's really sought after, it's very expensive, okay? The next one down I've given you is a slider, whether it's aluminum or um, vinyl. These are the sliding windows that slide back and forth. There's what's probably in your bedroom. These are the easiest ones for you to call out of at night and sneak away. Don't do that. The, the next day is awful. It's not worth it. Okay. So here's some slider windows. Um, right now, they're, the one that's here is called a Craftsman style. If you look at the picture on that, you'll see it's divided in the top. There's some little millions in there. They're just decorative things. Um, we can modify those out and give you a lot more windows really soon. Okay. Then we have the next type of window there is, is a casement. Casement windows are, um, they're kind of in vogue right now, meaning they're in style. They have a crank, you crank the window and they open out like doors. And the reason people are liking them is they can clean them easier. You can just crank them open, they're easily clean, you don't have to pay someone to come do it. Um, they open all the way up. Uh, some of them actually have a way that the wall will pop out into a balcony. So it's kind of a cheeky way of making a pat balcony in tight areas. But casements open out, they're like, like a door. So you have to make sure you're not running into something. Um, they're pretty common in kitchens. So if you looked at the old films, there's always like some old lady, she's making berry pies and she puts them on the window. Those are casement windows. Okay. Uh, there's another double hung window that's just incredibly large. Now, if I go into your library, and again, it's go to load, and we go all the way down the bottom. It's the very last library we have. There are no Z libraries. We don't have a library for zebras. Sorry. There is a zebra you can get, though. I'll show you where I go to. Don't know why you want. Okay, now you have a plethora of other windows. So a curtain wall awning, this is a commercial application. Um, curtain walls is the glass on the outside of the building that's strictly decorative. It's usually glass you can't see through. It has a mirrored finish on it. Um, big cities like it a lot. It makes the city very, very hot. When you put this on a building, you're gonna, the area around the building is gonna be five degrees hotter than any other part of that city. So if you go to like Dallas or Houston or New York, those cities are much hotter than they should be. And that's one of the pro that's probably a bigger climate impact than cows. Because we're heating up the air and that causes the weather patterns to change. So we're better off to plant trees and not worry about our mirrored buildings. That's probably the worst thing you can do in the city. Um, it still looks nice, but maybe not the whole building, you know, maybe a little less. Uh, if you want to feel what that's like, go on I-15 at about 3 in the afternoon and go past the Health Center Theater. There's a big mirrored building there for the parking structure. Um, it just about wiped out I-15 when I put that thing together. Um, it's now tinted, so it doesn't reflect as much because it was blinding the credit of anybody in the afternoon. And if you, if you get in the rush hour at that time of day, you're going to bake in that car. It puts a lot of heat on the freeway right there. So you can get a feel for what that's like. Um, another fixed window. There is an opening here. Why would I want a window opening with no glass? Where would I use that? It's kind of an odd thing. Here's an opening that's in the window area. There's no glass in it. Where would I use that at? Inside the house. So maybe you've got a, a kitchen that you want to open up a little bit. If you've got your sink, you can open the wall with that opening so you can see through to the next space or it could be a food pass-through. 
kind of thing. So there's use for them. They're kind of nice. Um, I'm giving you some skylights. Those will apply when we get to the roof. Um, here's my steal on skylights. Be very careful who you buy them from. Okay, there's only one that's guaranteed not to leak. And that's by Velux. And they have to be installed by a certified installer. Otherwise, skylights always leak. They just do. Um, and so what they, the Velux, the difference of that is when it's on your roof, it doesn't sit flush with your shingles. It's eight inches above your shingles. And so you're able to treat it like a wall and seal it off better. But they're a little more expensive. But those are the ones that do not leak, and they're guaranteed not to leak for 20 years. So that's that's kind of a good thing. But you have lots of different ones. There's a little gopher mound. Um, so there's some different styles in here that you can look for. There's different configurations. This one's a nightmare to edit. If you want to play with this, you can. This is the window awning variables. Um, you can just change the configuration of this glass wherever you want. Um, it's a little tricky to do, but you can play with it. There's some box windows, bay windows. So don't, if you're doing just a small bay window that you're not gonna put like a Christmas tree in or a piano, use one of these. If you intend on there being a piano or a Christmas tree or a sculpture of the David, then do a full bay. But these are just little pop-outs uh, that you can just put in there. Just like, they just stick out like a foot. They're not really deep, they're like a foot deep. There's a bow window, so here's, who had the rounded window? Yours, okay. We're not quite to full round, I'm gonna show you where that is in a minute, but there are these bow windows. And what they are is each panel is square, but they're at 15 degree increments. So that's usually which way we'll go on a rounded wall, is just lots of small windows at 15 degrees. Um, if you want bent glass, the reason we do that is it's about a $10,000 per pane difference. If you go with glass, but I'll show you how to get that in. You can make a custom glass wall if you want. And I can help you with that. It's kind of fun to make it. Um, then we have our casements and our variable stashes. Again, there's some funky things in here that people thought were cool. Okay, now for those of you who are looking deeper and want more, remember in your Canvas course, as we get going here, slide that over real quick. If we go in, get past all of the parent teacher conference crap. I, I remember that library I have for you in Google, the supplemental resources. There are some custom windows in there as well. They're underneath the Revit components. And that links again to my Google Drive. I will add more things there if you need things and you can't get them at home. Um, but there is, you have to kind of read, there's mostly showers and things like that. The windows, um, there's not a lot of windows, to be honest with you. Most of the things people have needed have been doors and um, showers and things on those lines. So there's like double glass doors, that's doors. Uh, and so whenever a student asks for something, I just add it to the library. Um, well, I forgot how long I've been doing this. So this is why we don't put everything in our template, because this right here alone is 11 gigs of data. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. We still got to the W's yet. Okay, so there um walls are I don't have any windows in there at all. How nice is that? So here is the big here we go. Okay. This slide I'm gonna take you to is free. It is managed by Autodesk. It's their uh, community site. It um Replaces, remember how to not do the shared libraries? I'm going to take you to where the shared libraries are. Okay. So it's a web page and it's called Revit City. That gives you an idea how much is in there. Okay. It's a city's worth of stuff. Revit City. You just type that to bring you to this point right here. You will have to make an account, it's free. 
This is a safe site. They police it very, very carefully uh, to keep it safe. It's not very pretty though. It is a very plain Jane storage library. This is it. There's not, not anything really fancy about it. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and log in so I can show you things. Okay, so once you log into Revit City, um, create an account. Uh, don't use your same account you do with Autodesk, keep them separate. What? I'm in the middle of a lecture, sir. What? What? Well, I can't do anything about that. I'm not a nurse. You have to just take care of it, sir. Why are you hurting? you what? Okay, I really can't do anything about that. We, we've got just about an hour left. And I clicked and added a digit, didn't it? I'm being blocked. I wasn't watching what I was being blocked. Then. Okay, so here's the downside. Right now I'm being blocked. Um, I haven't cleared it yet for that passage. So let me just show you what's in there. So you can do this at home and download, same to your Google Drive and you can have them. We're probably not gonna be able to bring it in because of the size of this library. But let me show you a little bit about how it works. When you do a search, it, there is no pretty fancy Windows drivings on this. So if I'm looking for um, stained glass windows, that's one I don't have for you. When I search that, then it's going to give me the library. And these are built by Autodesk. They're built by manufacturers. They're built by users. And they put them in here where you can use them and bring them in. So if you want a stained glass feature, so there's this one that has a picture of an owl out of stained glass. You could then download that. Now, because of the nature of this, if you need something, let me know. And I usually will download it, put it into the share drive and get it for you. If there's something you need that you just can't find. So one thing we are looking for or need to find is um, curve window. So we can find with those. Okay, so we look through and find what curved windows have been built. If there's any here, wall openings. So here's a curved double hung window. It's got two reviews. Look for the reviews. In this case, this has got four or five. Five's a good, a good use one. If there's no ratings on it, skip it over. It means it's still not quite finished. And so no one's used it yet. People have downloaded it, but they haven't rated it. So it might be a hit and miss. Um, I'm just looking to see if I can find one real quick here that's gonna work. You could take this curved wall opening here. Um, and we can maybe work with that. So this is where if you're doing really special stuff, we could create. I think on your house with that curved wall, we'll then probably be able to custom build it. So I will make sure we block out some time and we'll just do that with you and get that wall. It's gonna be a little easier. Okay. So the library's here. Um, here's a curved bookcase. I mean, there's just, it goes off of one keyword and it goes. So um, you just have to be kind of look what you want. If you find something you want here, what I'm gonna need is this name that's in orange. I need that full name and send that to me. I'll get downloaded for you. Okay, so that's what Revit City. If you do the account at home, you won't be blocked. But because of this, this has things like the, some of the words used are, are school blocked. So for instance, in a high school or in a, a gymnasium, there's a, a shower in the commercial world called a gang shower. Well, that's a blocked word in the school district. Because it's in this library, this library is blocked. Anyone know what a gang shower is? No. Okay, most of you don't see those. It's a pole and there's six shower heads on it that everybody just showers around it. They're kind of going away in public schools um, for lots of reasons. For lots of reasons. It doesn't matter. Um, 
So you will, you'll see them mostly in um, the military still uses them, but they're kind of going away a little bit. But they're, they're still in this library because it's an international library. There you might find um, like doctor office equipment in here. So that's somewhat offensive to some people. So just be aware of that. You'll find anything that's in the city is going to be in here. Okay. All right. The next thing I want to do is talk about placing a window. And you've got to look on this side properties panel more than anything in the whole wide world. Revit places windows in an upside down fashion. It places them from the floor up instead of from the ceiling down. So all these windows all line up with the doors. So they all have the same head height. And that's typically how we would build the building is they go from the ceiling down and they all line up. Okay. Revit places them from the floor. So this, let's switch this to yeah, that's my work. So the window I have on the screen right now selected is 61 inches wide and 48 inches tall. So if I look at my side constraint and then mount that window three feet off the floor for the seal height plus the 48, that means my head height is seven feet. Okay, the thing that changes is this. If you want this window to be taller, you have to lower the seal height. Does that make sense? So let me let me change the different window that's a little more normal, like this guy. That's a low one. This is just a fixed window. It's kind of what we'd find in the bathroom, or uh, may I put it right here by the shower? So this window is 16 inches wide, 24 inches tall. When you're dealing with windows, you have to think about what is going on in that room. Okay? Can you put a window in a shower? Yes, you can. But when you do that, you need to know and keep in mind what the flush factor is going to be. Okay? So when we put windows in bathrooms, we'll often frost the glass. That means we sandblast it so it's white. That makes it so it's opaque. Um, but what you want to do, and if you're buying a window for a bathroom for your own house, you want to go and put your hand against it. Look out from the other side. If you can tell where every finger is, move on. If it's just a big fleshy color, you're fine. Okay, because there's different levels of frost. So I'm going to tell you about a house I did in Alpine. That's down the point of the mountain. They had this really cool 10 acres of land, all shrub brush oak, a shrub brush oak. Um, heck of a view, deer would come down in their yard and stuff, and they built their master suite to look over this kind of meadowy area. Huge windows around the top, huge windows. About 10 years after they built the house, someone bought the property next to them, built another house. The neighbor could look up the hill and see everything that happened in the top. So you, you, you don't think about that when you build, but as a designer, you need to always think. Our fix was very expensive. What we ended up doing is they did not want, they didn't want curtains in the bathroom, um, which is understandable. They get moldy and yucky. So we changed out the glass. We put in digitized liquid quartz glass. Um, it's about $600 a square foot. Uh, what that is, is when you turn the light switch on, it electrifies the liquid quartz. And the windows go black. Oh, wow. So, just like on a digital watch. So, that way you have the privacy when you need it, but you have the view when you want to just look out. Uh, it was an expensive fix, but one we could probably have avoided if we put the bathtub on the other side of the bathroom. We just, we just should have looked at the property and seen what was to sell. Um, so, things like that happen. Kind of work with them. So, I'm going to bring this window in. I'm going to put it here. There's going to be a shower right here. And so when I bring the window, always pick on the stud side of the wall, okay? Don't put the glass in the brick, okay? Put it in the stud, and I'll place that. And then once I place it, I'm gonna go into the 3D mode here to look at it a little more succinctly. So I'm just gonna go over to the side where that's at. And those walls are 20 feet tall if you can figure that one out. Okay, so here is my window. Now, when I click on that window, it's gonna tell me a little bit of information about it, but it's telling me my height here from the top down. 
And that's where this leaning, because this is a 20 foot, a 20 foot wall here. Um, and your walls are nine feet. So it's gonna throw you off on your thinking because we want them to be at seven feet, okay? Where that head height is. So when I look at this, if my window is only 24 inches tall, let's do the math here real quick with me, okay? The bottom of the window is three feet off the floor. The top of the window is at five feet. Who in here is shorter than five feet? Anybody? No. So if you're in this shower, what's exposed? So to give you an idea, from your clavicle to your navel is 18 inches. Okay. So when you're thinking about that, you guys got yeah, big deal. We'll be okay. Um, that's great until you're 50. Then it is a oh crap. Okay. So um, we want to think about that. So if I'm going to adjust this so that my height is seven feet. I'm going to add to the steel height two feet, make that up five, apply that, move the window up, and now at the top at seven. If I come from the seven foot down to five feet, what am I going to see in that window? What would be in the window if I come down five feet? So, so the top of the window is at seven, and I come down two feet, and my sill is at five, what am I going to see? Heads. Lots and lots of heads. That's all I'm going to see. So if you're doing a bathroom, think about where people's heights are. Um, there's not the average height for women right now in the United States is five ten. Men are at six foot. We've moved up in the last fifteen years. We've added two inches to both genders. Why is our society getting taller? What does that? Food. Yep. The better nutrition you have, the more the faster your bones grow. So um, if we were to take and do the same average in um, the Philippines, the average height of a man is five foot two. That's a lot shorter. And so we have to design a different way when you do international design. So you have to look at those demographics. They're important. Okay? So what's the important part of this? When you place your window, you're placing where the bottom of the window is then add the window height, and you shouldn't be more than seven right now. Put them all at seven until you get your ceiling height to figure it out. Okay, does that make sense? So you want your head height to be seven, so you have to look at the second number, add that to your steel height, and that should be seven. Okay, what about the width? Is there a problem with the width? As long as you don't run into no wall, that's fine. You're good there. Um, I bet I can move that and find a wall. Yep, right there. See the door through the window? It's kind of fun. You can just move your window around. It's a very big door. I'm not sure what door that is. Okay, but there, there's your window, okay? Um, your bedroom windows, let's do one of those real quick. This is the bedroom right here. I'm gonna go to a uh, little bit larger window. In this case, I'm going to go with a slider, and I'm going to go with the four foot by six, four foot by five foot. Okay. Now remember, you min your window has to be at least four feet wide and three foot tall. Okay. This one's going to give me some problems for the bedroom. That's why I'm using this one. So I place that right here in this. Um, come on. Maybe. Don't like you to do that. So I place this window here in the bedroom. Is that a this? When I place this window here, um, my seal height's three feet, my head height's eight. Okay, that means I'll make this work. I've got to drop the seal height for what? I'll give you one for two. Here's our board. Now I'm at seven, okay? I'm gonna go back into 3D and here's the problem. This is a code issue. Um, not that, it's this window here. Okay, in a bedroom, you have a building code 
that's going to control the size of your windows. The bottom of your window cannot be more than 42 inches off the floor. So if this window is five feet off the floor, do I meet code? No. And so what you have to do is you've got to make sure that window is down. What is 42 inches? What's the number of feet inches? So you guys have your brain. If I ask you, what is the feet and inches of 42 inches? It's a six. Yep. So that makes it easy. So I just put that cell height at three foot five. Then I can work it out. Now, when I do that on this window here, my head height is eight foot six. Okay. That means if I'm going to put that in a standard room that has an eight foot ceiling, the ceiling line is going to go through that. So use that to judge the height of your windows, okay, for your bedrooms. You don't have any restrictions in the rest of the house except for one, okay? And then they've done talking for glass. If you're putting in glass shower doors or a closed glass showers completely, that glass must be completely tempered. And that's the same glass that's in the windshield of your car. So if your windshield of your car breaks, if someone's throwing a rock at, what does it do? The spider's out and sticks together. There's laminate inside of it. So it's all glued together. It's also in little teeny tiny pieces. Okay, that's tempered glass. The idea is that when that glass breaks, it goes into like little sugar cubes, little teeny tiny squares. That way you're not gonna, you probably won't bleed out because if you're breaking through a shower door, you probably don't have a lot of protection. Okay, and we don't want you to bleed out. When people die, the number one room they die in is the bathroom. It is the most dangerous room in your house. No, because it's living, right? That's a good idea. So what happens is people die in bathrooms, they fall in front of the door, and no one can open the door to get to them. That's the big part of it. That thing is slipping in the bathroom and slips and falls. Okay, the other place you have to worry about is if your glass is near a door, within 12 inches of a door, it has to be tempered because some of you guys have tempers and you slam the door that can break the glass and if your glass is within two feet of the floor so if you do a, a glass wall from the floor to the ceiling then that whole thing has to be tempered glass okay but other than that you can do pretty much whatever you want okay all right is that good for today not enough lecture you ready to do windows how many are done with doors and windows they're all completely done all right. Can you give me um, three minutes to set up and I'll do the fours? You guys ready for fours? Okay. Let me just give me a minute here and I'll switch over to fours. And they're fun. And then that we'll call that a, yeah, we got time. Keep thinking you guys get out 10 after, you don't. All right, so we're gonna put a floor in. Easiest thing in the world. Do not put a floor in your garage, okay? It has a different floor. Okay, so we're gonna put a floor. Yay, floors. Make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go architecture and then go right to what says floor. Makes some sense. <laughs> I know. But you know what? In my other class, it'll be floor and say, where's the floor at? It's just what it is, okay? Um, so click on floor, and just don't worry about what type, just click on the main floor. I need to say work once in a while. And it said come up, should come up the generic 12 inch floor, okay? Hit the down arrow, let's click on that box, and I've given you some different floors, okay? The four inch slab is for your basement and your garage. We put concrete in the garage. Basement gets concrete, then cover on top of it. Okay. You have a nine and a half inch and a 11, seven, eight. Sometimes you want to step between spaces. So they want to step down from the kitchen into the family room. This makes a natural step. It's a very old 1970s way of doing things, the sunken living room thing. But uh, sometimes it's still a nice thing to add as a separation in, in open planning. So we know we're going from one space to another. The other thing is, is if your house is really small, 
if you've got a house that's less than 25 feet deep, you don't need the 11 7 8. So if I was doing like a HUD home or a Habitat for Humanity home or a tiny house, I'd use the nine, the nine halves. And some of you want to design your own tiny house to live in because mom and dad didn't kick you out in two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Um, by the way, if you keep your tiny home smaller than 600 square feet, you don't need a permit. You can just build it on your backyard. That's a really small space, but you can do it, right? You want 600 square feet is the limit. We're going to use this guy right here. It's 11 to 7 8 TJI. That's the most common floor used in our region. It's going to have a three quarter inch OSB board. That's the oriented strand board that I showed you the other day. With half inch gypsum board on the bottom of it for the ceiling in the basement. So it's got the basement ceiling and the main floor stuff for all in one. Okay. Pretty cool, right? And I'll show you how to make these as well so you can do that. But we're just going to get things moving because we're doing two classes at one at different hours. So please take advantage of that. Okay, here we go. Once I do that, I get this area up here. It says modify and create floor boundary. You'll get one of these for your roof boundary. There's another one for a wall boundary if you're changing that. Um, some of you are really looking forward to punching holes in your wall to make them fancy. We're going to be doing that. That's all next week. It's, now we're getting into the detailing. Okay. So the option I'm going to have you use, and this is how you're going to tell if your walls are all done correctly, is the default. So I can trace off a line. I can use a rectangle. I can use these funky little shapes. But this guy right here is just pick the walls. Okay. Now, as I go through this, the garage is going to be an oddball, okay, because it's different. But I'm just going to start pick the walls. And literally, you pick the wall. And then zoom up on it. Look at where that puts that purple line. It's on the outside of your stud. That's where your floor goes to. It goes underneath the wall to the outside edge. That's the subfloor. It's not your carpet. It's not your tile. It's the subfloor. Okay? Remember when we did the wall detail? So then pick your next wall. And it should follow along. If everything's drawn, should follow that nice, pretty little exterior face of stud point on your wall. And you can go really quite quickly. This goes around the whole house. When we do carpet and tile and stone, those kind of finishes, this one's the man by bad boy. Look at that. Goes all the way through my garage. Just go ahead and pick it. Then you get the wall, the partition wall here. And now it's closed. I've got to do a fix here. So go get that point. We're making progress. Lots of progress. Making progress, Griffin. Yes, I am making progress. On the outside. Thanks, Griffin, for sticking with us. So if you look really close at your settings, gypsum board, stud, stud so you're on the outside of the stud. Does that make sense? So gypsum, stud, then pink line. If it's not, stick your hand up and let's come fix it. They go look at hers and then just the upside edge, but I was just there in this because the way I did my garage wall, mainly because I usually do them right and <laughs> then you don't learn anything. Okay. So some of you have already shown this to, like here, there's no floor underneath this wall because it stops on the wrong side. So I'm gonna use my align tool. I need to change it from face to core. Face of core. The core is the stud. Okay. And I want it to go to the outside. So I just have to pop it out. So it goes out to that outside edge. And same on, and that's usually on your partition separations between your wall, your house and your garage. And it depends on which way you do it. Some of you work just fine because you drew counterclockwise. And that's just the nature of it. You just have to kind of check your work, make sure it's all we want. The other problem I have is this line here goes all the way down. And this is the, the error message I want you to see, okay? When I hit the green check mark to finish it, it's gonna give me an error down here. Lines cannot intersect each other. The highlighted lines are currently intersecting, stupid. It doesn't say stupid. 
Okay. This is, no one, no one's stupid. This teacher. Okay. So notice these lines are orange. There's a problem here. The easy fix is to go back into my modify area. If you hit, I'll continue. Back and modify, just use your corner tool and select these two lines and close them off so you don't have that hangnail. It's just basically a hangnail like in AutoCAD. And then when I check it off, boom, it turns blue. That means there's a floor there. If it turns blue, you are successful. And go fix the ones that aren't successful. <laughs> 